of attacks on New York's Andrew Cuomo with an eye or with the uh, purpose of heading off uh, any uh, attempt to run for president by Cuomo in 2020. And uh, Colin Reed is joining us this morning. Good morning, Mr. Reed. Thanks for being with us. Good morning, Fred. Thanks for having me. Great to have you. If you would first just talk a little bit about America Rising, what it is and who's behind it and what kind of resources you have to get involved and what you're getting involved with. Yeah, of course. So we were set up by Matt Rhodes, who is a Saratoga Springs native in 2013, uh, with the purpose of uh, going after Secretary of State, then Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. And we did that for four years successfully, and we do it a little bit differently than a lot of traditional uh, res- uh, uh, packs out there in that we don't do television ads. We do opposition research. We do video tracking. We have those guys out there with cameras following candidates around. And we do it with, a little, with social media, which is, of course, where more and more of the dialogue is going. So uh, we had a, a good uh, cycle in 2016, and now we're a forward-looking group. So we're looking ahead to 2020, and that's where uh, Governor Cuomo comes into the mix. Well, that assumes, of course, he is Governor Cuomo in 2020, right? Of course. And, yeah, I, that's a great point. Uh, with the right candidate and with the right national climate, and uh, he, he certainly is susceptible to a, a challenge in 2018. And history is littered with candidates who overlook the race directly in front of them for the race beyond it. And uh, 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 pride comes before the fall. And if he doesn't pay attention to that 2018 reelect, uh, it could certainly hurt him in 2020. With that in mind, well, if he's defeated next year, you can forget about 2020. And I would note, uh, I don't know how close you've been following it, but I would note that he could be defeated both in a Democratic primary if someone like Eric Schneiderman, the current attorney general in New York, who'd like to be governor, runs against them, or in the general election. But either way, I mean, if that could happen, aren't you being a little premature by targeting him now or saying that you're targeting him now? No. We, we learned with Secretary uh, Clinton that research and narratives, they take time to sink in. And when you have the advantage of a four-year head start, you can really start to drive these things and have them sink in uh, with the electorate. Uh, people always remember, if you look back at 2004, uh, when John Kerry had his famous moment where he said he was for the funding in Iraq before he was against it, that's when everyone looks and says, oh, yeah, that guy was a flip-flopper. But the reality was it had taken years of work on the, on the back end of driving that narrative for folks for it to sink in. So political narratives take time, they take repetition, they take discipline, and they take consistency. So we're just doing our, our due diligence here and getting an early start on the game. Well, what's special about America Rising? I mean, this is what the Republican National Committee would be doing. I would think this is what the New York State Republican Committee should be doing and other groups out there that uh, even uh, some Democratic organizations, I'm sure, are doing research on uh, Andrew Cuomo, should he be the candidate, and they may be working for another Democrat who would like to be the nominee. Uh, What's special about America Rising? Well, we have the luxury of not having to play defense on any of our own opponents. We are just free safeties. We go after the Democrats. We go after Democratic candidates. It gives us uh, freedom to, to do more things. Uh, one of the things we're really, uh, that I really enjoy doing is fueling the flames of the Democratic civil war that's going on right now. Uh, we'll the, talk party about that. Leader, the party is leaderless. They're directionless. Uh, they don't know what they're doing in terms of where they're going. They've got the energy and, and, and the enthusiasm is driven by the likes of folks like uh, Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren. And Governor Cuomo recognizes this. And some of the stuff he's been doing lately, palling around with Bernie Sanders, is obviously a play to the far left that is now driving uh, the train of the Democratic Party. It, it's no longer a party of Bill Clinton or John F. Kennedy. It's a, it's a party of, of socialists and, and folks like Elizabeth Warren and, and Bernie Sanders. So that, that, those are the people who are going to decide who the Democratic uh, nominee is in 2020. And it's, uh, it's, it puts people like Governor Cuomo, who have, uh, have to uh, square their positions that are no longer popular uh, in the Democratic primary voters with, with the new energy. And that's why he's doing things like doubling down on the millionaire's tax. That's why he's offering his, his, his embracing Bernie Sanders' plan for so-called free college. This is just a play to the far left that he knows is going to decide his fate in the 2020 uh, primary. You think that may be why he also said that conservatives really have no place in New York? I'm sure you saw that statement from a couple of years ago. Right. Not to, me- not to mention his banning of natural gas drilling in the southern tier, his attacks on the Second Amendment, and so many other things that he's done that betrayed his promise when he first ran in 2010 to turn New York State around and make it a business-friendly state in which upstate people would want to live and not flee as they've been doing since he took office. Yeah, it's not cool in today's Democratic Party to, to advocate for capitalist views like that. 
uh, you have to embrace the, the principles of, of socialism to have to have a chance. And that's why you saw Bernie Sanders do so well against Hillary Clinton. So anyone who's looking at 2020, and I don't just think it's Governor Cuomo, by the way. I think there are other folks out there. Um, maybe Senator Gillibrand, uh, Senator Booker down in New Jersey. Um, they're, they're all going to face this challenge. Uh, but to get through a, a primary, you're going to have to have a record of pure opposition and obstructionism to President Trump, and you're going to have to be able to flex your left-wing uh, muscles.